Uh, also, that's almost a byproduct of the reactor. The reactor also sets up a gravitational wave from the 115 being bombarded. This gravitational wave was present at the top of the reactor and is essentially guided in the same way microwaves are guided through tuned tubes. And uh, this goes to their amplifying cavities and through the projectors that are in the bottom of the craft. With the gravity generators running, is there thermal radiation danger to the crew? There is no thermal radiation while the reactor is running. The thermionic generator is 100% efficient, which is in violation of the first law of thermodynamics. But in fact, it works. Element 115 is stable. And for those familiar with chemistry, we know that uh, elements with higher atomic numbers have shorter and shorter half-lives. Um, however, when you reach a certain point, they call it the island of stability. There is a place, and we've theorized this for a long time, somewhere around 114 to 116, there should be an area in there where the nucleus of the atom is geometrically stable with protons and neutrons, where it, it no longer decays. It's not radioactive. 115 is, in fact, this element. In fact, it does occur again somewhere around element 247. Uh, of course, you know, we're nowhere near synthesizing that. We can only you know, predict things like that, but uh, that's, that's where 115 is. Did they, the aliens, give us element 115 in large quantities? Whether or not it was given to us, uh, I, I can't answer that question. However, I was told that we have 500 pounds by one of my co-workers. Uh, how it was obtained and you know where exactly it came from, I don't know. Whether it came in one of the crafts or you know, it was separate cargo somewhere, you know, anyone can speculate, but I was, I was told that was the, the figure. You were able to get away with a sample of Element 115. How much did you get away with? No comment. You witnessed several nighttime test flights unofficially while off the base. What did you see? The test flights I saw off the base, actually the, the best test flight was witnessed by my friends who I had brought out there. I, at the uh, exact moment the craft was hopping around and doing some really impressive maneuvers, I had turned around and I think was uh, looking for the video camera or, or something to that effect. But I missed some of the most uh, impressive maneuvers. But the craft was uh, similar to what was done before that I had seen close up, other than the fact that it went above the mountain range, uh, moved a, a much greater distance at a much higher rate of speed. How were you able to find out about the test flight schedules? The test flight schedules were told to me uh, specifically because I was probably going to have to be present during those times. And at that time, the test flights were taking place on Wednesday nights. And from what they said, that was because that was uh, statistically the least amount of traffic in the area. And that's uh, all that they were concerned about. Does the propulsion system release any sort of discharge or exhaust? There was a high voltage discharge on the bottom of the craft, but uh, as far as there being an exhaust, there was none. Why did they appear as glowing balls of light in the night sky? Well, that's kind of the same reason why a neon light or a fluorescent light lights up. What you're dealing with, with is a high energy source in essentially a gas atmosphere, oxygen, nitrogen. And uh, when you apply enough energy to a gas molecule, they emit photons, they emit light. And uh, I don't think it's anything, it, it's a, really a byproduct of how the craft operates. When it's a, emitting that much energy, the gas surrounding the craft emits light. The same reason why lightning is visible. You have a huge electrical discharge, and the gas emits light in the form of lightning bolt. If you were going to see one of these crafts at night operating, it would appear really as a glowing ball or a, just a bright light in the sky from a distance. Uh, even close up, you know, you'd see a, a glowing halo around it. Uh, this is typically what you'd see in your normal UFO sighting, uh, if you've heard them a lot. However, keep in mind that lights in the sky are caused by much more common things than flying saucers. Tell us a little more about the aurora you witnessed taking off out of Area 51. When I was leaving the uh, 
Area 51 facility heading down to S4, there was a tremendous roar, and I have described it as uh, the sound like the sky was tearing. And I couldn't see out the windows of the bus. All I can see out was the, the very front. And as we came by, I asked Dennis, who was my supervisor and on the bus at that time, said what that was. He said it was an Aurora, a high-altitude research plane. And um, it was a large craft. And the one glimpse I got of it was from the rear. And it had two huge square exhausts with veins in them. And uh, it was just, it sounded more like a rocket than a jet. I don't know. I even think he did mention that it was liquid methane powered. But um, there again, you know, working on the disk technology, I really could care less what was rolling around at Area 51. But uh, it, it, it did catch my eye. As a result of going public, have there been any attempts made on your life? One day when I was getting on... Um, Interstate 15, driving down Charleston Boulevard, uh, a car came up alongside of me, and uh, I thought he was just trying to race me to get on the freeway. Uh, this was after I had left the project. Um, it was a white, boxy-looking car, exactly what make and model, I don't know. But um, I accelerated to get on the freeway to go fast, and there was a gunshot, and the back of the car was hit and I skidded off into the uh, median and I stopped and I was frightened and I just stood there because I thought the guy was going to be alongside of me and just shoot me. I had nothing to do. I was essentially paralyzed with, with fear and I waited there and then nothing else happened. And do I know it was a government agent trying to kill me? No. Could it have been a drive-by shooting? Maybe. Uh, you know, so wasn't it, I mean, it was an attempt on my life, but by who specifically, I, I don't know. Though I was threatened uh, before I had left, that they threatened my wife's life and my life, so I can only put two and two together and say that they were kind of pissed at me. In an earlier interview, you had mentioned that they had put a gun to your head. Tell us about that. That was after we were caught out when I had the test flight schedule, and uh, I brought some friends out to show them the disc test. Uh, we got caught out there and the following day I was debriefed down at Indian Springs Air Force Base and um, I was in the room with the security guards that caught us, my supervisor and some other people and uh, some of the security personnel. Uh, yeah, they were essentially grilling me about security and how could I possibly bring people out there and uh, I guess I wasn't as responsive as they would like and they got in my face and one of them pulled a sidearm out and, you know just pushed it.